Looks like we have another Strictly Lindy competition. Let's take a look. <laughs> Welcome to Street Smart Swing, folks. My name is Jamin. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. In a moment, I'm going to be taking a look at a Strictly Lindy competition. For those of you who do not know, this format is one of my favorites because it allows dancers to present a pithy snapshot of their choreography and performance skills. Some dancers really excel in this format, while others demonstrate certain qualities that might shine better in a different competition. Either way, I'm going to be giving you my opinion on who I think is the winner and why. But before I do that, don't forget to check out the benefits of becoming a Street Smart Swing member. You get access to the Lindy Hop Blueprint, which is my success system that helps dancers really understand the core principles that make Lindy Hop work fundamentally. Once you can grasp what master dancers understand, you will be able to grasp the principles of Lindy Hop at your current level, which will ultimately put you in the driver's seat to fix your own dancing without always having to need a teacher. Members of the Street Smart Swing community also receive personalized feedback on their social dancing. They will also receive 24-hour access to all classes posted each week. So check out the benefits in the description below.
Ooh, this is going to be a hard competition to judge. There were so many things that I valued from different perspectives as a judge. I first have to say everyone who stepped out and performed had an ample amount of courage that is so admirable. It's not easy putting yourself out there for everyone to judge, especially when you have the Galactic Swing Dance umpire judging every one of your moves on the YouTube. So congratulations for creating an example for others who may be totally petrified to compete. Now, the first couple I want to highlight was the one I think I haven't seen before. And I like that. This couple had so much joy and excitement and clean movement. I feel like oftentimes dancers get so excited, but end up jeopardizing the control of the technique. And this couple doesn't do that at all. They maintained a light and focused connection between each other, especially throughout their transitions. And I felt they really had some stellar timing. Overall, I would say they were my third favorite couple. Now, my second favorite couple really gets the unique award because of their ingenuity. There were so many moments where you could tell they were deliberately inserting their ideas into traditional patterns in a different way. They'd lead you on with some very obvious pattern and then augment the sequence, which would thwart the viewer's expectations. I really liked them. Now, I will say I'm a little disappointed because I felt the third place couple had better control over their sequences, but I felt the second place couple had more original ideas. And for me as a judge, I value ingenuity over historical moves that have been executed perfectly. Don't get me wrong, as responsible dancers who didn't make up swing dancing, we have to preserve what has come before, but we also have to innovate in ways that add value to the original dancer's ideas, or we just end up doing the dance version of karaoke. So all that to say my first place couple demonstrated the balance of executing their sets with more efficient control, solid timing with the music and exhibited unusual creative movements. One of my favorite things that this first place couple did in my mind was they established how well they could do what the third place couple could do in terms of control within the first couple of eight counts. They stayed in close position far longer than most people would feel comfortable doing, but that little moment showed that they were unafraid to show off their ability to connect well just with each other. Doing this made it easier for the audience to anticipate contrast. I think my favorite moment they did was a syncopated movement that came from a traditional pattern, but really just amplified the drummer's rhythmic transition. They could have deliberately planned this fancy footwork or it could have happened as a natural mistake of you know, them getting a little behind the beat and trying to catch up. Either way, I really liked it. And, and I wish it was executed at a different point in the music to capture that crescendo effect. When that happens, the audience can appreciate the music more and generally will respond with an outburst of excitement because the dancers end up mirroring visually what the audience is hearing at the highest point in the music. But regardless of them not doing that special move at the point that I want it, I still feel they were my favorite couple. I really like the strictly format because it's like watching sports highlights instead of the entire game. I feel it embraces the high impact points of a showcase format without feeling excessive. All right, so who was your favorite couple? Let me know in the comment section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to help some of you guys in my class online. Take care.